A recent study by the Prudential Company found 95% of women have a role in day-to-day -day financial decisions at home. But when it comes to long-term planning, most women are actually left out. We're going to try to help you change that. Early Show Financial Advisor Ray Martin joining us this morning to help start us on a solid long-term financial plan. That's right, Ray, Erica. you're here to help, as always. Great to be here. You yeah. took a look at this study, and there were yeah. really a few key points that jumped out at you. So walk us through those, if you would. Yeah, this is Prudential's 10th anniversary financial and experience among women behavior study here. And what they found is 95% of women were involved in the day-to-day -day household financial decisions, which is great. And among those, 25% said they were the primary decision makers when it came to making financial decisions in the household. Great progress here. But there's a but in there. I sense it. <laughs> there is. When it came to planning and investing, making decisions about long-term investing and, and planning for Things the like future. Things like retirement, savings. Exactly. 50% said they need some help. 33% said they need a lot of help. And only less than 20% wow. said that they were very prepared in terms of their own retirement planning. If we're so involved in day to day, why are we so lacking as women when it comes to the long term stuff? Because we're too busy? You know, there are a lot of reasons out there, but here's my take on it as a financial planner practicing the last 23 years. Women are dealing with buying the food for the kids, getting the meal on the table, working a job, bringing home the bacon, frying it up in a pan. Getting the clothes for kids in school. Sound familiar? Get them to school. Get them to the doctor's office. <laughs> this is my office. life, Ray Martin. <laughs> Planning vacations, right? That's all day-to-day -day stuff. You're living day-to-day, week-to-week, month-to-month. Who has time to think about long-term financial planning? But you really need to, and that's sort of the bad news part that came out of it, that you're going to help us turn around at this point. So, so Absolutely. How, do, how do we navigate that? How do we change our focus or, or broaden our focus? Right. And, you know, there, there's no aptitude problem here. Women are just as capable, if not more so than men, to do long-term planning Good clarification, Ray. Okay, I just want to be clear about that. <laughs> it's from my experience here. Here's what you need to do, a couple of things. First, start on this process. Take inventory of all financial accounts and sources of income. Where the accounts are, what firm they're in, what account number, how they're titled, your name, his name, retirement account. What's, what's the balance of those accounts? Cash, bonds, stock, mutual funds. Make a list of that and make a list of all sources of retirement income also. So is that as simple as just you know, writing it down on a sheet of paper, making a Word document, just so that it's all in front of you yes. with the numbers and with those names? That's where it starts. Okay. I was sitting down with a couple of clients two days ago. They had 18 accounts. They didn't wow. even know they had them. They thought they had 10. Okay. They had stuff scattered all over the place. You can't manage it and monitor it until you do this. So after you do that, you take inventory of your yep. accounts. You say the next really important step is saving. <laughs> I don't say saving for women. I say save, baby, save. <laughs> Here's why. Women are going to live longer than men, 7 to 12 years. And they're going to live more years in retirement alone because they're going to outlive their spouse. And their career and savings is likely to be interrupted because they are primary caregivers for children and even older parents. All things being equal, women need to save 15 to 20 percent more in retirement savings when they get there than men do. So they really need to focus on saving all the time, even in years where they're out of the workforce. Okay, so even when you're not working, you also say when right. you are working, make sure, if you can, that you are at a job that has retirement benefits. You know, it's so important to look for employment with a company that has good compensation but good benefits, mm -hmm. flex time off, child care good health insurance plan, subsidized by the company, but also generous match in a 401k plan and pension benefits so that you have continuity of compensation and benefits when you are taking time off and you build benefits faster, particularly for your own retirement savings. Look at the Working Mother Survey for the top 10 companies to work for. Companies like SAS, software company, does a great job in this area. Uh, and, and one more thing, which is sort of tied into this when yep. it comes to working, is you say when you go in there as a woman to get that job, you absolutely have to negotiate your salary because there's still a huge pay gap. You always have to negotiate. When you get an offer, all things being equal, men are more likely to say, no, I want 20% more, and they'll get it. Women are likely to say, okay, I'll take that offer. It's just not generally in their DNA as a group to negotiate. Negotiate that salary offer. You deserve it. And negotiate those raises when they come in because it has a compounding effect over time. Women need to fight for the right for their pay because they deserve it. And then when we get that extra pay, we bank it, right? We save it. And save it. You got it. <laughs> Ray Martin, thanks as always. You're welcome.